down. Uh, yeah, there will be earthquakes and, and weather phenomenon. There is. But, you know, that's rather mild compared to what it could be. And, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's 2012 and we're still here. We're still here. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's, um, again, I feel a lot of this have been... Well, we've talked about this before with other guests in the context of catastrophobia of, of uh, Barbara Hanklau primarily, that this is also a memory that we all have in both genetically and maybe even even in our subconscious mind that we're uh, we're fearful of, of the of the end of the world of this doomsday because we all have a kind of a, a memory in one way or another of it and and we uh, might be feeling that we're in, we're in the same era but as, as you know we've always seen uh, doomsday or and the end is nigh kind of people throughout history and 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 the question is or, or is is it are we here with that again now, just in 2012? But we have just simply more people talking about it. When now we have the internet as well, of course. So the the, the broadcasting of this is even more <laughs> is more dramatic, if you if you know what I mean, Bob. Yeah. Well, 13,000 years ago, it was a catastrophe. Atlantis and most of the inhabitants on Atlantis sank to the bottom of the ocean. There were a few conscious survivors, but not many. Uh, but I don't think it's going to play out that way at all this time. Uh, first of all. Last time, 13,000 years ago, was not a positive shift. It was a negative shift from a high level to a low level. But we're going back up this time. And, uh, and here again, I think it's, relatively speaking, a very gentle ride. Um, I want to continue talking more with you here in our next segment in a little while. I want to ask you more about both Atlantis and, and also some of the traditions that we have from the past coming out, um, connecting to Egypt. Thoth, you have some interesting stuff about the, uh, you know, Merkaba, and we can go once more back to uh, some of the number symbolism and what have you. So much more to, to discuss, obviously, and, oh, and, and as well, what the fourth dimension really, uh, more how this will implement itself, perhaps. But uh, before we do that, though, let's talk a little bit about your website and, and also some of the titles and so forth uh, you have out there. Your, your flagship, if you will, book out there uh, is, is Nothing in This Book is True but it's exactly how things are. It uh, recently had its 15th uh, you know, anniversary uh, recently, and, and you have some new uh, titles out there as well. Uh, go ahead and mention some of these, uh, Bob. Okay. Well, you're right. Nothing in this book is true. That's the, the main book. And the 15th anniversary is literally a new edition. Uh, I decided that it was either time to write a new book or to rewrite nothing, and I chose the latter. So I pretty much just started over and rewrote the book and brought it up to date and added tons of new information. Uh, it's pretty much the source for most of what we're talking about here. And you'll find that it is available on my website at bobfrizzell.com. Uh, my other books, uh, Something in This Book is True, is the sequel to Nothing. And the third book, You Are a Spiritual Being, Having a Human Experience. Well, that speaks to the unity of being, uh, which I really do feel is the perhaps single most important bit of information that I came across. And uh, it just, everything else just, uh, just fell into place when I really got this idea of unity, of oneness. So that's what spiritual being is talking about. Um, then I also have this, uh, the new book, Transforming Through 2012, where I've collaborated with 32 other authors, each of us giving our sense of the times that we're in, and uh, you've pretty much got a take on, on my feel of it. That's so right. Far. That's right. Uh, your website is bobforsell.com, and uh, we will have this linked up on redeskrations.com as well, and people can just click in uh, into, into the store right there, and you have uh, the titles uh, right there as well. Um, so that's excellent. Anything else you want to mention now before we wrap things up here then for the first uh, segment, Bob? Well, if you go to my website, you can also see the two workshops I give. Uh, uh, both are weekend workshops. One is called the Flower of Life, and the other one is called the Breath of Life. And essentially what we're doing in these two workshops is in many ways uh, paralleling the ancient Egyptian mystery schools where the initiate would first spend 12 years in a school called the left eye of Horus. Basically, the left eye, because it's controlled by the right brain, is the focus on emotional healing. So this is what we do in the breath of life and, uh, and in the flower of life. In a sense, we're recreating the other school known as the right eye of Horus. 
And in the right eye of Horus, the initiate, way back in Egypt, would spend another 12 years uh, primarily using the language of sacred geometry, a language that is known everywhere throughout the cosmos, and also a language that can be used to talk about anything, which makes it particularly useful in showing the left brain, the part that is really stuck in separation, that there's only one creation pattern. There's only one image through which everything in this created reality came through. Well, that's a fundamental step in showing the left brain the unity of being. So this is what we do in the flower of life. And then in addition to that, we also teach the Merkaba, the living Merkaba field, which ultimately is a, you might say, a tool of ascension enabling one to take your body, turn it into a ball of light, and travel from one world to another, which could be kind of useful if this dimensional shift stuff is, is actually real. Very interesting. This is some of the things I want to ask about uh, in the next segment as well. So do stay with us. We have much more to talk about. But again, then the website is bobfrisell.com. Head on over there and take a look at all the material uh, that he has up there for you. Ex excellent. Stay with us, Bob. We'll be right back after this short break.
Stay with us into the second hour as we continue to discuss Synthetic Consciousness, Ascension, the Merkaba with Bob Frisell. He shares his insight on how the Great Pyramid was used as an ascension tool to experience the five stages of consciousness at a time when this was not accessible. The Egyptians allegedly had the knowledge to synthetically create unity consciousness to experience the fourth dimension. We talk about the Hall of Records and evidence for a super advanced civilization here on Earth. Bob mentions the role of ETs and why they have been experimenting on humans. We'll talk about working with the Merkaba and the importance of emotional healing to find your true self-nature. Bob also stresses the importance of the remembering process and stepping into the greater picture. Towards the end we talk about the energy field or grid 60 miles over the planet Earth which Bob says was synthetically made to help us. He'll tell us how it corresponds with consciousness. Very interesting continuation here coming up that you shouldn't miss with Bob Frisell. Sign up for a membership if you're not already a member. It's only 5 euros per month. Continue listening to this second hour or any of our previous programs. Check out our 3 month recurring subscription option. We also have other one time payments going from 3 months up to 2 years. And you can use your credit card or PayPal account. This is a great gift to yourself or a friend. And of course you help support our efforts and continued productions. We're very excited about our upcoming programs with Mark Passio, Ashoria S, Carl Munk, Anthony Peake, Andrew Goff, Joseph Atville, Josh Reeves, Sonia Barrett, Dean Clifford, Barbara Hanklau, Håkan Blomqvist, Paul Levy, Laird Scranton and Dr. Louise Turi. So lots of interesting and important material.